Nachos is already at Perik Zayin Alpha Aleph, Perik Shvi, in the seventh Perik. We say the Adas from the foundations of Jewish religion is to to know Shakel Menabes when he holds them. God causes man to have prophecy. In Perik Shemishnai is on the explanation on the mission of in Sanhedrin, the last Perik it says Mona Ramam counts the twelve, eight, thirteen basic from precepts of the religion which are known to us. The sixth one is to believe with complete faith that all the words of the Nevi'im are true. That everything that God causes a person to prophesy is true. We can, and here he begins to explain what is prophecy. And the Nevi'im only takes place only on Chochem Godel Bechochma, on a man who's very wise with wisdom, Kibo Midoisaf, who's uh, very strong in his uh, attributes. He's able to overcome his desires, as we'll see. And his, 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 his uh, desires should not overcome him regarding anything in the world. Elohim is Gabo Bedaitoi. But he rather he is with his own knowledge able to overcome al Yitzray Tomit is his own desires. Ubaldeya Rachova and he's of a uh, wide thought ranging person. Nachoina correctly so admired, very much so. The source is is found in Durham thirty eight A. Amar Abiyanis says said Akadish Bohu does not leave his Spirit well only on somebody who's a, a wise person, a strong person, and a rich person. And the Kesem Mishnah wants to say that Ram explains the Gemara Gibor is strong, <coughs> that he overcomes his his inclinations, and that strength of the physical body. And when he's rich, it means that he's very happy with what he has. And so we find that the Ram writes himself in the eight broken. The word does not reside only on a person who is wise, strong, and rich. And the wise includes all of the concepts of wisdom. Rich is all, and is rich in, in his in his attributes. What do I mean to say? He has enough. He's happy with what he has because that uh, somebody who has what he needs is called rich. As it says, who is in Perik, we find in always Perik Dal, Mishnah Aleph, who is a rich man who is happy with his portion. Gibor is also uh, in the concept of attributes. What does he mean? That he should be able to use his strength according to what his knowledge tells him to do. I guess the Mishnah question is what the Ran asks on the, this explanation, that the technically the Amora's simple explanation is a man of strength, and a rich rich means a man of, of money, because we we bring proof from Moshe Abeno, who was very very strong with his physical body, that he himself picked up the uh, the each of the beams of the Mishkan, and so too he took the the carried the luchos which are very heavy, and he was also very wealthy. Because what was left of the first lucha is, is uh, made him rich. Lachem, therefore, the Ran explains the Gemara as it's understand its usual understanding that it means to somebody who's strong with his strength and rich with his money and not with his attributes. The Ran explains that the reason that a novi has to be strong in his physical being and rich in money is not uh, a need for the level of privacy only. That people will look at him as someone special, because that's the way people are. They they only give value to somebody who is shows his strength. Because the Mishnah answers, it doesn't mean the Ram doesn't mean to explain the Gemara in Midorim, and he also admits that there means strength and riches and in wealth. Where he says that that are not, the, the conditions for prophecy as strong in your attributes, and also somebody who has great comprehension is logic and not because of the Gemara. Drama is logic. I'm going to ask you questions on the Kassam Mishnah. The Drama in the eight programs explains that that's what the Gemara means in the Dome. 
uh, uh, <coughs> Hebrew, a strong man and, and a rich man is in attributes. He, the Chidok questions, even the Mura Nebuchim, explains that Chosh Chochem, Gibor, and Osho, that I mentioned the Chazal, are in attributes. <coughs> and therefore the question is, what is the Ramam, what is the Gesem Mishnah right that that was the Ramam's own logic? Gesem Mishnah asks another question, why didn't the Ramam write the, what's written in Gemara? They should be strong is, uh, with strength as well, and wealthy with money. <coughs> Um, Ma'arit, in his drushes, questions in the Rambam, the question is the guess of Mishnah, and he adds, he, can, he continues to question, how do we know to learn from Moshe that all the prophets need to be like him, of that po- so, sort? Furthermore, why didn't the Rambam tell us this condition, which is, he has to be, another condition which is placed in the Gemara, he has to be humble. And Ma'arit explains that according to the Rambam, the ultimate uh, purpose of, of receiving prophecy is through humbleness, which brings one to Ruach HaKodesh, as we find in the Bryce of Abel's Benyoya, and Avodah Zohar 20b. But the, ult- the ultimate goal is only when a person has <laughs> what to be haughty about, when he has wisdom, when he has money, and when he has strength, and still he remains humble. That's the true humbleness. That brings a person to the Holy Spirit and prophecy. Because that's what they say in the Sifri. But Ish Moshe Onam Even though he was a great man in wisdom, in wealth, and in strength, he was still humble. In this fashion, the Tolis Yankiv Yosef writes on the Mari Yavitz, the first that he wrote, that holiness is a reason for all the sins. And there are two, three things that cause holiness. Beauty, strength, and richness, riches. Now, somebody has who has those tendencies, or he has those abilities, and he and he does not become haughty, uh, but he serves the Akkadish Who he is ready to have the Shkina reside on him. Kesef Mishnah answers the the according to his own understanding this question. The Rosh says in the Gemara over there that uh, what Rabbi Yonison adds that Akkadish Bohu does not reside, he words says, Bikfiyas, on a permanent fashion. According to him, the Gemara only requires a person should be strong in, in, in physical and str- money, is only when he's going to reside continuously with that prophecy, prophet. But here, Ram is talking about only the conditions that are needed to, necessary to get to a level of prophecy, even if it's only a temporary one. And therefore, he left out the words of Rabbi Yonison. The Savior, Hanayis and Shefa, brings proof to the Rosh from the Gemara, from Moshe Rabbeinu, because he became rich from what we, he was left over from the second Luchas, the second tablets, and uh, you only had it from the second Luchas, so Moshe was already a prophet by the first one. But according to the Rosh, you can explain that it, it wouldn't have remained with him because that he's, he, he's ready to have the war, but um, only by Maimon HaSinai, when it says, you shall remain with me, he became rich. My Surakeya questions on this explanation. All of the Tanoim that the Gemara says, uh, uh, these conditions that the Gemara says uh, is only by Moshe. Only him was, by, uh, was it continuous. In Sefer or Hashem, he writes, the Rosh doesn't mean continuously every moment, but it means he should be able to admonish the Jewish people. Therefore, he explains how only a Novi who states prophecy to admonish the Jewish people to travel the, the proper path. According to this way, we can explain, understand the, the what the Ron wants to say. Why is there a need for the prophet to be rich? And the answer is because uh, that is in order to make him pleasant and, the, and honorable in the eyes of the creatures. And they should re- receive what he says. But for his own soul, he doesn't have to be in this level. And according to this, we can understand the rush. 
that only the Shekhin is only shows itself in a permanent basis to a Novi and that means this this level of riches and and uh, strength. Lecha Mishnah questions on the Kesar Mishnah. The Rambam in Marin of Ukraine would seem that the Rambam is talking about in, in actually this very self same situation which should reside continuously. The Abbas also asked, how did Bilam get to the level of, the, of prophecy? He certainly he didn't have the correct uh, attributes to overcome his physical desires, nor was he happy with the money he had. And he and he gives us the novel idea that only another of Yisrael has to have these conditions. And Yom Yom Emlin adds, when is it? When do we say that you need to have these conditions? Only by a Jewish prophet, by a prophet from the Goyim, you don't need so because Hashem doesn't show them to him himself to them with a completeness only uh, as an occurrence as we find the core it happened that then prophecy could happen even by somebody who doesn't have all of the attributes that the Rambam says even those uh, they even though they don't have even one of the proper attributes that for that reason their prophecy should reside on them but it can still happen the prophecy we find he had an evil eye he, and he had an evil spirit and he was very haughty and that means that uh, he was complete in all the terrible things that a person shouldn't do and uh, the other aspects of the Rama says he didn't have wealth or he, his mind he didn't have a, a breath of thought because he was poor in both in thought and in money Money because he had to, he was ready to sell himself to Bullock, to Sir Chris Klaisro, because of his uh, poor, uh, poverty, and he was he was poor in thought. Because Chazal tell us that he didn't even know the thought of his animal, uh, and he wasn't complete in his physical be either physical being either because he was blind in one eye and he he limped, as Chazal say in the posuk Vayedach Shefi. And that's what it means. He went chefing. He he limped. Why? Uh, why is this so? Rehavim yeah, says so. They he was only a prophet because otherwise, uh, you might say, if Bilam had been a proper person, they would have made from him a god, and therefore, Hashem didn't want that to occur from a prophet of Hashem. The Raman continues, A person who is full of these attributes, Sholem Begufoy, is complete with his physical being. Now this we have to understand, because he explained that a, a strong person is somebody who is complete in his attributes. What does he say, complete in his physical being? The Chidor writes, and the Gemara says that he was also very tall, very nice looking, and that means somebody who is of stature. In another way, we're going to explain that Rama Mihalas Deus writes that since the physical body is, is strong and complete, it's from the ways of Hashem because it's impossible, it, it, you can't understand when a person is sick. And now, and now here it means that he has a healthy physical body. And so we find the Rambam in Hosea's Talmud Torah. He writes, "Every man of Israel is obligated to learn Talmud Torah, whether he's rich or poor, whether he's complete in his body or he has he's tormented." So we see Sholem Begufoy is a person that's not sick and doesn't have any pains. And here he adds that even when he has the completeness of of, of his uh, attributes also, then he also needs to be complete with his physical body. Yeah, the Yavitz adds that this is the reason that by Har Sinai, all the Jewish people were healed because uh, they were all prophets and they should have been complete, and even though there's a need for completeness in the body. But a correctness of words does not. Uh, Stop a person from saying poor prophecy because we find Ramesh Rabbeinu that he had a difficulty speaking, and also by Amos he was a stutterer and he was still a prophet. So we see that the ability to speak 
with it is is not one of the conditions required for prophecy. The Novi, who's complete with all that we mentioned above, Kishi Kanes Le Pardes, when he goes into the explanation of all the Torah, which goes with four aspects, Purush, regular interpretation, Remes, hint, drash, lect, inf inference, side is hiddenness, and then Yimoshech Boisen and Yonam Agdolem Al Choykim, and he'll, he'll continue in those great uh, subjects which are distant from us. and and we'll have the proper understanding to comprehend and to uh, understand, and he will be able to have a wide-ranging understanding of all that. He, he also elevates his holiness. And he separates himself from the ways of all the people. Who go in the darkness of the time. And he's quick in doing things. And Klal uh, and he, he, he rectifies his soul. He will have not, no thought about those things which have nothing to, do, which are uh, worthless thought. Nor the uh, those things which are have to deal with the, with the times and what is going on. But his mind is always set. In, in connection with above, with Shemayim. And, and that brings him that his thoughts can always be open and ready for great things. And his, his mind is Kshura Taras Kisei, Hakkavoid, Akisei, and the, his hand is, is, is uh, it's always tied to where the, uh, ho the Holy co Throne of Heaven is. To understand the angels that we, as we said before, they are a considered a form without a uh, without a substance to form them. He can uh, uh, look into the wisdom of God. How God created the very, very first beginnings until the very depths of the earth. And he knows the greatness of God through that. Not only by what he sees, but with the wisdom, as we mentioned, that everything out, other than the Creator, it from the very first creation until the smallest. Uh, insect which is found at the depth of the earth everything is from the strength of his belief and since he knows himself and recognizes the greatness uh, of, of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he knows everything when the, when the prophet uh, attains all of this above right away the spirit of holiness it resides on him that Everything is depends upon the, the, the desire of God. And it could be a situation that by itself you should be prepared for prophecy. But the prophecy will not fall on him. Now, certainly in the beginning of the words of the, in the beginning of the words of the Rambam, he spoke about the holy uh, forms we found in the first two Prokim of Hilchus Yisrael the Torah, and these are the Rambam calls uh, refers to as Maisei Markovo, the 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 action of creation, and afterwards he wrote in that wisdom of God, which is found in the second part, which is the action of creation itself. Now the Lecha Mishnah questions it would seem from his words that everybody has all of these these. Uh, conditions that were mentioned are for sure that he will have prophecy. In Marina Bukhani writes that God has the desire that he should be a prophet. That when even a person's ready for prophecy, he's not sure that he'll get it. 
until HaKadosh Baruch Hu will desire to have him. Just as we find by Baruch Benerio that he was upset before God and he said, eh, woe is to me that he, God added troubles to my hurt. Why am I different from all the other prophets? Yeshua served Moshe and he had Ruach HaKodesh. Uh, Elisha served Elio and he had, and, and he had the Holy Spirit. Why am I different from all the other servants of the prophets? And HaKadosh Baruch Hu said that every place the prophets do not prophesy only in the merit of Yisrael. And that generation was not worthy for it. Even though the, the, he was worthy himself. Abshleim Ege questions. In Aloha Hey, we find the Ram writes that when you want to be a prophet, they're called B'nai Anavim. Even though they have the proper intelligence, it, the wisdom will only come, come upon them if it so desires. Like he says in, in the Morin of Uchim. And that will contradict what it seems to say here, that it will all be automatic. And he explains what well, we find in, that in Halacha Zion, uh, it could be that the Nebuah by itself, for him, that's different from the level of a prophet who is sent for the world, people, the population, populace at large. So we can say that really for himself, he'll get the prophecy. And that's the level of having Holy Spirit. But for the people, even if he's ready for prophecy, it maybe won't happen on him. Only when there's a desire of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that he should be a novi for others. In the Migdal Oiz it's written that only by Bnei Anavim it could be that the, the Shekhinah will, will reside on them, and maybe not. But the prophets themselves, it could, it, then it's automatic, as we find by Elisha, that uh, it says in Melochim, now bring me a harpist, or player music, and when that will play, immediately will have prophecy. So we can explain the Rambam that the Rambam is speaking those who want to pray, be prophets. These are the Bnei Anavim. Here he's talking about those that already had the, all the conditions for it, and therefore, once they are a prophet, they have it immediately. And even though Yirmiyah Novi, uh, he had other. Uh, disciples that did prophesize like Haggai and Zechariah and Malachi, but these prophesized after the uh, after they went into exile in the beginning of the second bias that that's when prophecy returned for a short period of time at the beginning of the second bias and even Baruch ben Nerya had t prophecy twice and from them on, he was counted among the prophets that stood for Klal Yisrael throughout the generations. At the time that the prophets will come upon him, then will it will be pleasant upon him the level of the angels who are called Ishim. Before in Perik Beis Al Rosayin the Rambam wrote. At the tenth level of Melochim, the lowest level is called Ishim, meaning that they are those that speak with man. And uh, they, are sh they are shown to the Novi through the, through the uh, looking glass of prophecy, and therefore called the Ishim, they see. That is close to being a human being it's in the same fashion. Here the Ram says that at the time that on the Novi will have Ruach Kodesh, his soul is mixed with the level of the Malochim, Malochim, who are Ishim. Yehov Elish Acher, and he will change to someone else. Yehov Medaito, he will know, She'enik Moshe Hoyo, that he's not the way he was. Ela Shenis Ala, Al Ma'ala Shah, Bnei Odom HaChachamim. Just that he came up to a higher level from other people. Moshe Nehem and Bishol, as it says by Shol, Viznabe Yiso, Imam, Vanaapechas Lish Acher. You shall prophesize with him, he will change to be a different person. Shul changed when he became a prophet, even though he didn't have continuous prophecy, only to the level of Ruach HaKodesh, because it was for him the prophecy, because in the Pesach says, 
Pitzolcho Olecho Ru Hashem, and shall reside on you the spirit of Hashem, and you'll say prophecies, Nabeso Imom Neparas Lish Ache, then you will change. That's what actually happened. And then the, the desire of prophecy, the way of prophecy was with him, even though he didn't reach the level of being a Novi, he was someone else. He wasn't the person he was before. With this we can understand what the uh, later commentaries say that being in Moha, it says Shabuniel was not a Novi, but the truth is he wasn't a Novi, but just that he attained the level of Nevoah. He attained that level of Nevoah.